Recently I was playing around with the Godot game engine and came across these two nodes, the Light 2D and Light Occluder 2D, and they produced this really cool shadow effect. So I was curious about how this effect worked and whether I could reproduce it in WebGL. I quickly came across this article by Amit Patel on Redbob Games, which describes a technique of calculating triangles between the light and the walls by sweeping around and finding the nearest walls and then using the ends of the walls as the vertices for your triangles. And triangles are great because we can send those directly to the GPU and let it do all the rendering. But I'm going to be doing something slightly different here. Rather than drawing triangles to represent the area that's lit up, I'm going to be drawing the triangles that contribute to the shadow areas and then use that as a mask. Using a mask for the shadows will give us a couple of extra benefits like semi-transparent shadows. So for example, a glass pane or something might cast a shadow but not a complete shadow. It does have a few pitfalls though which I'll get to later in the video. So let's start off with the basic geometry. Imagine we have a torch pointed at a wall and we'll call the ends of that wall A and B. So if we trace a line out from the light to point A and then we keep going, we're essentially tracing the edge of the silhouette of the shadow. This extends out to infinity but our light doesn't go to infinity, so we can just stop at the radius of the light. If we do the same thing again for point B, we end up creating this shape that represents the, the shadow. Then we can just split that area up into two triangles and we've got our geometry. So let's start writing the shader to render this geometry. I'm using the TWGLJS library to cut down on a lot of the WebGL boilerplate. I always like to start off just rendering a plain old triangle just to make sure we're talking to the GPU correctly. In WebGL the coordinates go from negative 1 to 1 so here we're just filling each corner of the screen. The shaders are about as simple as they can get. The vertex shader just takes the two dimensional array that we wrote before and converts it into a four dimensional GL array. We don't care about the Z or the perspective transform dimensions so we just set them to 0 and 1. The fragment shader just chooses the colors for our triangle and for now, we're just going to set it to red with 100% alpha. Okay, we've got our triangle. So the next step is to calculate the correct geometry for the triangles that we want to draw. So we need to take some inputs and convert them to a float32 array of vertices. Let's go back to our diagram from before. If we imagine this on the screen, we can give each of our points some coordinates. So I'm going to put A and B at 0.5 either side of the center, and then the light source at the center bottom. So the inputs to our function are just going to be these three points. To store those points, I'm just going to create a 2D vector type. So our first step is to draw the line from the light source to point A. And to do that, we need to calculate the vector that takes us from the light source to point A. We'll call that WA. To calculate that vector, we just subtract the location of the light source from point A. So in this case, negative 0.5 minus 0 is negative 0.5 and 0 minus negative 1 is 1, so our vector is negative 0.5 and 1. So let's translate that to code. We'll write a subtract function that will take two points and return the vector between them. Then we can just write out our calculation for WA. Okay, so now we have that first line. We need to extend it out to the very end of the shadow, so I'm going to call that SA. To calculate SA, we need the unit vector of WA. The unit vector is just a vector with a length of exactly 1, and this is useful because we can multiply it by any number to extend it to that length. So in this case, we're going to multiply it by the radius of the light to extend it out to the very end of the shadow. But the vector we calculated before, WA, is not a unit vector, it's actually slightly longer. So to convert it to a unit vector, what we need to do is divide each of the x and the y by the vector's own length. So we write a function called distance to calculate the length of the vector. And this is just the hypotenuse of a triangle. Then we need a multiply function so we can multiply the unit vector by the light radius. And finally, we can write out our equation for calculating SA. And then we can use that vector to calculate the point at the end of the shadow, which we'll call EA. To do that, we need a function that'll let us add two vectors together. 
Now remember this vector SA takes us from the light source to the end of the shadow. So if we add the position of the light source to this vector SA, the result will be the end of the shadow EA. Now we've got all the information we need to draw one of our triangles. Triangle number one will go from point A to point EA to point B. So there's half of the shadow. To draw the other half, we'll just follow the same process, but using point B instead of point A for our vector calculations. And there's our shadow, or kind of. It doesn't really look like a shadow yet, but we'll get to that next. So I hard-coded all the locations from those positions I mentioned before, but let's make it so that the light source follows your mouse cursor. We don't need to change anything in our calculations, we just pass in the location of the mouse cursor rather than the fixed coordinate we had before. So now starting to look a bit more interesting. You'll see that when we get really close to the object, the shadow doesn't cast out that far. There are ways to fix this, but it's probably not going to be an issue once we add the other shaders. So we've got our first shader, which generates the shadow shape, but we're currently rendering this out to the screen. And what we need to do instead is render this to a texture on the GPU so that we can use it in the next shader. The next shader will take the shadow texture we just generated and another texture which represents the light source and combine the two. To create the light source texture, we just need a gradient. Our light's gonna be a point lamp that radiates in all directions. So we'll just use a radial gradient that goes from white to black. You can use different colors if you wanna add a tint to your light source. Dark blues are really good for moonlight and yellows are good for incandescent indoor lighting. So our vertex shader for the light is gonna be slightly different than before. We need to pass a texture coordinate over to the fragment shader. And our fragment shader is just gonna look up that coordinate on the light texture. So we've got our light rendering, but it's not moving around with the mouse. So we need to offset it by the light position. Now we just bring in our shadow texture and in the fragment shader we check the pixel of the shadow texture. We'll use the red channel of that pixel to determine how much light we show. Okay, it's sort of working but something's not quite right. The blue should be a hint here because earlier on I set the background colour of the canvas to blue. So this suggests that some of our pixels are partially transparent. This is a handy technique for finding if you've got any alpha issues which is exactly what's happened here. We haven't set the blending mode, so our shader is replacing the background pixels instead of adding the new pixels on top. With that fixed, it looks like there's another problem. It seems like the image isn't being cleared between frames, as you can see from this effect that sort of builds up. This is a mistake that I often make, and it's to forget to bind the frame buffer, which is the texture that we're rendering the shadows into, before clearing it. So this means that the texture is never cleared, and we end up drawing the shadow on top of the previous frame's shadow. So this is starting to look a lot better. We have our light and our shadows, but now we need a scene to light. So now again, instead of rendering to the screen, let's place what we've rendered into a texture. Then I'll bring in this drone shot that I found on pexels.com, and we'll place that into another texture. Now we can finally write our last shader, which is going to apply the light to the scene image. And there we go. The shadow still looks weird because its location is hard-coded, but we'll fix that in a second. First, let's look at the fragment shader for this. We sample both of the textures here, and then we use the red channel again from the light to decide the alpha value of the output pixel. If you're using tinted lights here, you'll want to multiply the scene color by the light. But for the simple white light case, this works. Now that we have a scene, we need to place the shadows in the right locations. So I'm going to add some functionality to draw lines which represent walls. And for each of those walls, we'll just draw two triangles using the calculations we had before. So I mentioned before that there are pitfalls to this technique. One of those is that the triangles we'll be drawing will be overlapping. So our GPU might be doing some unnecessary work 
In practice though, modern GPUs are pretty fast and if we're rendering pretty simple geometry, this is not gonna be a demanding task. Now there's one last thing to add just a little bit more realism. It's unlikely that our light is the only light in the area. There's always gonna be a bit of ambient light, possibly from the moon or from light pollution. So instead of clearing the texture that our light shader renders to, to complete black, we'll clear it to 30%. And this will give us a bit of ambient light across the whole scene. So this is looking a lot more realistic. To make it a bit more interesting, rather than our omnidirectional lamp, let's replace it with something a little bit more like a torch that shines in one direction. So with our torch done, let's trace the outlines of all of the objects that we want to cast shadows. And I think we've got something looking pretty good. It's amazing how much more depth a little bit of lighting can add to a scene. That's it for today. I hope you got something out of this. If you want to know more, I'll post some links in the description including the source code. Or if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. 